come. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to call out that my coworker Ashley Matthew was originally meant to give this presentation, but unfortunately, she had a last-minute emergency and wasn't able to join us today. Uh, she still prepared this wonderful application and presentation that I hope you're going to enjoy. Uh, I also want to point out that over the past 10 years, my main framework has actually been Ruby and Rails. So I want to apologize beforehand for any sort of Django mistakes I might make. Um, but that's also why this application is exploitable, right? Um, so a little bit about me. I currently live in Managua, Nicaragua, Central America, and I'm a backend engineer at Aptable. Uh, like I said, I've been working on Rails for the last 10 years. Uh, scalability is my passion. And understanding security issues has served me very well in my career, which is why uh, we wanted to share this information with you today. Um, so I found that the best way to understand security for myself is to actually work through the exploits. Uh, and while frameworks do keep you out of trouble most of the time, all of these security exploits we'll see today can happen in any framework. It really just takes a second of laziness or carelessness. Uh, we're going to be talking about five specific vulnerabilities here, uh, SQL injection, bad HTML standardization, uh, misconfiguration of your allowed hosts, open redirects, and a leaked secret key. By the way, uh, we do have uh, a repo available uh, where you'll be able to see all of the code. And we actually also have open PRs that showcase each of these vulnerabilities and their fix. So I would like to introduce you to TeamSpace, the least secure social media platform ever. Uh, we built TeamSpace as both a fun platform for our team to mess around with and a playground for exploiting security vulnerabilities. Uh, you'll see it's a little bit like MySpace, where you can do some very interesting customizations to your page, uh, leave comments for people, uh, and uh, you know, add Java, custom JavaScript, custom CSS, just uh, we let you do whatever you want to your page, even inject random JavaScript libraries. Uh, so to kick things off, I want to start with something that most people have likely heard of, but maybe haven't had a chance to see in action, which is SQL injection. Now, your typical Django's day-to-day -day ORM usage handles this out of the box. So you only really have to think about SQL injection when you start using non-standard things, like the raw query sets. However, if you do look at the docs for raw query sets, they're extremely loud about the possibility of SQL injection. For TeamSpace, we wanted to add search so that you could find that cool post that you only remember a part of. We optionally apply search terms when they're present, which at the time we were writing TeamSpace, I really couldn't remember how to do. So instead, we just manually built the query string using string formatting, and we execute it as a raw query, which opens us up to SQL injection. So here you can see how the search works, and here is how we ended up implementing it. Just a raw string, and we inject uh, user-provided input. So the way uh, SQL injection works is you're literally injecting your own input into a SQL query. So um, this particular payload that I'm going to use uh, will have three sections. Section one is just me closing the original uh, SQL command. So you can see I'll uh, just close the string, close the uh, semicolon, and go on. And then I can do whatever I want. In this case, we're going to do two more things. Uh, first, we're going to delete a post. And second, we are going to try to gain access to something that we maybe shouldn't have access to. Uh, like, for example, you could assume uh, we are filtering by your friends. And maybe you can get data from people that are not your friends, posts and things that look like. At the bottom, you can see what the server is going to see after I uh, use this command on the website. And let's go ahead and check out how this works. Uh, first, we need something to be delete. So let's assume that I accidentally sent Tin my password, and I did this publicly. Not a very good idea. And oh no, I've noticed, but I also don't have a way to delete this. But I'm a hacker, so let's go ahead and hack into this. So I'm going to click Reply here. Uh, you won't be able to see this, but I'm just grabbing the post ID, which is going to be in the URL bar. And then I'm going to switch over to the search uh, area and inject my payload. So I'll close the original uh, SQL command, 
which I can see because this is a public repo, but even if you couldn't, there are ways to around it. Uh, then I will um, have a delete command for my post, where I ID 11 in this case. And then for some extra fun, I'm going to go ahead and select some uh, posts. Although I know that the word secret doesn't show up in any post right now, so I'll go ahead and switch that to something that will actually return some data. So let's use the word my. And when we search, we see that we actually get uh, results, but that's not very exciting, right? We could, also, we could already get results. The important thing is that when I refresh this, the post is gone. So there are plenty of possible fixes for this vulnerability. In the PR that I opened against TeamSpace, we did what we should have done all along, which is to conditionally build a query using the built-in filter, which, as mentioned before, will correctly handle SQL injection. You can see there where we started using a uh, filter depending on uh, input. And there is another way to fix this as well. Uh, as the Django docs recommend, if you're gonna use uh, raw, you should pass user input as an array. And this approach will also handle SQL injection for you. So next, I'm gonna move on to something else many people have probably heard of and encountered, which is HTML standardization, right? How do you deal with user input that might be a little not safe? Uh, now, I don't know if anybody else here has had the opportunity to design your own MySpace page, but if you didn't, let me assure you that you are missing out. With TeamSpace, we wanted to bring back some of that over-the-top fun, and we did so unwisely by allowing all user content to be displayed without any sort of uh, sanitization, no HTML escape. And we did this by using the safe keyword on the template. Now, by default, Django escapes variables included in the template, unless they're marked as safe in some way, including using this uh, template tag. Uh, so now that means that we can share images and make customizations using JavaScript, but that comes with some downsides, as we'll see. So I can go ahead and leave tin a uh, comment, and I can actually use JavaScript in this comment. So I'll add an alert. Which will show up every single time somebody looks at that comment, which is gonna be extremely annoying. So everybody that visits Tin page, Tin's page will now get that alert every time. So that's annoying, but it's pretty trivial to actually take this from annoying to outright malicious. For example, I could capture users' cookies. So we still have the alert, but also uh, we can print the cookie down to the console, or you know, we could do something a little bit more interesting with that if we had some more time. Um, now, to fix this, we could take all the fun away and remove the safe tag, but there's actually a hint nestled in the Django docs for something completely different, which is to use the bleach library. With the bleach library, we can set an allow list of HTML that remains unescaped while ensuring the rest of HTML is safe. Now, bleach is not completely safe, uh, especially if you don't know vulnerabilities that can be introduced via various HTML tags, like Canvas is a pretty good one. Uh, but using it allows us to keep some of the fun, like for example, uh, links and images, while dropping anything that's annoying or outright dangerous, like JavaScript. Another approach could be to use uh, some sort of uh, limited intermediate language, like Markdown, uh, but that can come with its own security pitfalls as well. So next, we're gonna go on to my two favorite vulnerabilities on this list. And I like them because of how much creativity they inspire when exploiting. Uh, these vulnerabilities are gonna leverage the fact that I set my allowed host to a wildcard. For the first vulnerability, it is also going to help that I've done the same with the CSRF token. So the first one is allowed hosts. Allowed hosts is meant to be a list of domains that Django is safe to serve traffic from. So for TeamSpace, that really should just be a local host for local development and our production and, uh, URL. But when we got started, we used a wildcard because we didn't really know what the production domain was gonna be. But as we're gonna see, that was not a good idea. So this is the payload that I'm gonna use here. In this vulnerability, the first command I'm running is going to get a cookie from our server, just to get a CSRF token. But you can see that the host I'm using is aptable-hacker.com. 
So after getting that token, I'm gonna go ahead and use the last command to create a password reset for a random user in TeamSpace. However, instead of using the actual host, I'm again gonna use the hacker domain, which will send them over to a domain that, I, that the hacker controls. So let's see that in action here. I'm just getting a CSRF, CSRF token here. We get a reply. And then I just hit the password reset endpoint. And by the way, the Gmail on the right is uh, teamspace tmp at gmail.com, just to show that we're actually gonna get an email from Teamspace itself. Uh, you can check the domain, teamspace at aptable.com. However, uh, the, uh, the email domain, the domain inside of the email is actually aptable-hacker.com. This happens because Django is using the host provided by the host header when building our URLs in templates. Uh, you can imagine why this is extremely bad, right? So before I fix allowed host, I wanna share another vulnerability that's exploitable because of a combination of not setting the allowed host and not properly handling redirects. Um, so TeamSpace has an open redirect, and an open redirect is a redirect that doesn't validate where the destination is. They just send you there. So for example, uh, let's say that one of my team members sent me this link. They're trying to show me something, and I'm probably gonna click it without question, because they're a team member. However, this is what the URL actually looks like. Uh, sorry for the numbers in the domains, but you can see that uh, the left and the right domain are different. So let's see what happens if I end up clicking on this link. Uh, it sends me over to TeamSpace, so I'll just go ahead and log in without question. I wanna see what they sent me after all. But, oh, I'm sorry, I typed my password wrong. So let me just go ahead and do that again real quick. Oh no, my password got stolen. <laughs> uh, so this works because of the next parameter in the link that I was sent. On a successful login, uh, you wanna send people over to some sort of landing page, but in this case, we're sending them to another website that's mimicking TeamSpace. And this happens because our code is blindly redirecting without doing any validation. So we should go from this over to this. Uh, we should use URL has allowed host and scheme, and this will ensure that any redirect only goes to approved domains. In this case, what I said to in the allowed hosts, and optionally, I could also make it work with just HTTPS locations. And finally, for our last exploit, I wanted to show you off how we might exploit an exposed or generic secret key. Now, this example is gonna be a little bit contrived, but I promise that I'll highlight a non-contrived uh, exploit at the end. So in the code for TeamSpace, we accidentally hard-coded the secret key to this actual string secret key. And since this repository is public, anybody can see that I did that. So let's assume that I did the same thing with a read-only set of database credentials. Like I mentioned, contrived. But accidents do happen. Uh, so the default Django implementation for a password reset token relies on a few things. The user's primary key, the password, the login timestamp, the email, and finally, the actual secret key. So with those two uh, things I have, I now have access uh, to all of that data that I need. So I can write this script uh, where I get the user's primary key, the password, uh, the hash password, by the way, not the real password, uh, the login timestamp, the email, everything. And I can then generate a valid password reset token for any user. So this would give me access to any user's um, TeamSpace account. So like I said, this is a little bit contrived, and uh, we can see um, the script in action here, and we end up printing a password reset URL at the bottom, and right now you'll have to take my word that it works, but it does work. Um, now Django does generally do a good job of being defensive about how the secret key is used. In most places, you're also gonna need a second piece of information, often database access, like in this case, to meaningfully exploit it. Uh, however, not all frameworks are as nice as Django. 
I know of at least one application leveraging Flask that hit this exact issue. Um, so even with Django, if you step outside of the core, there are plenty of libraries that will leverage the secret key as a means of ensuring something. For example, the very first JWT library for Django that I came across uses the secret key as a signing key by default. Uh, given that JWTs are frequently used for securely communicating sensitive information, including authentication between microservices, this would be pretty bad if my key was exposed. Because some, that would mean that somebody could force JWTs without me ever finding out. Now the fix for this, thankfully, is pretty simple. Uh, we rotate our secret key on our database password, and we stop hard coding our secret key on our code. Simple, but it's also a nice reminder that you need to understand how all well your authentication is implemented. And that's it. I covered a lot of ground in not a lot of time. Hopefully you learned something new. And if not, I at least gave you something to think about. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can find uh, all the code I use here uh, on our repo, and you'll find open PRs that showcase each of these five security exploits, as well as their fixes. So I want to thank you very much for your time. I hope this talk was very useful to you, and if you have questions or you want to come discuss the merits of Rails versus Django, uh, you can pass by the Aptable booth. I'll be there all day. And we'll also have the, Steam Base, the TeamSpace app available for you to play around with, and we'll have demos on how to use Aptable to deploy your apps. So thank you.